What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sneakers on the Gram. Sneakers on the Gram concept came from my album Insta Fame, and I had a song called Faking on the Gram. And Sneakers on the Gram uh, is a combination of the way that I look at my new platform of branding, advertising, and marketing, which is BAM. And this episode is marketing. Lance Romance, that's Kimberly, and we are going to talk about marketing and how it works within the pop culture that we live in today, how it works within hip hop, and how it works in general with entertainment. So, um, I would like to start with saying that, uh, Kimberly, I believe there's a lot of um, people that don't really know the difference between the concept of branding, advertising, and marketing. So for the quick recap, um, let's give some of the podcast listeners um, a little bit of a direction. So the concept of branding is when two parties or more can come together and they benefit from highlighting that product to another level, but it's really part of their lifestyle that the rest of the world sees it through a lens. Right. Right. They're, they're branding a lifestyle. And I told people earlier, or we spoke about it, that branding is not sponsorship. Sponsorship, right. they're giving you that, and you're putting it in their face at the moment. Branding is what you believe in, or you're making people believe that you believe in. Right. <laughs> That's branding. And we discussed advertising on how people want to see brands. And how that works with branding and just... Definitely the way you advertise your logo, your brand, whatever it is you're trying to showcase and sell, that plays a major role. Absolutely. And I now like to discuss the marketing because um, the marketing component is important to branding and advertising because you now take something and you target a direct certain um, demographics, you target a direct consumer because you're marketing what you believe works for that direction. Sure. Um, I think with Jordan, the brand, uh, he knows his market, but that took many years. But with pop culture, the younger people now have gravitated towards the lifestyle of the brand. The branding. Right? But his market is really now universal. In the beginning, it wasn't so universal, um, but I think the the influence of fashion opened up a new market right. for sneakers. And I definitely think when he created this shoe so late, so much later in the game, he realized he needed to market the shoe into the lifestyle and see how it fits in. And when he created the shoe, he created it so that people could see his legacy and his career and what took him and led him to win the six rings. Absolutely. So he took different elements from different shoe numbers that he created, the six, the seven, the eight, the 11, the 12, the 13, and the 14. Right. And all those shoes he wore led him to the six rings. He wore them during that time where he won the championships. Correct. And the way he marketed that is what made the consumer want to buy it. Absolutely. The, the, the product that he was selling. Absolutely. So that was very important. Yes, very, very important. I think the concept of marketing the six rings um, took it to another level because there were some people that maybe uh, you're in your 20s that might not be aware that he won six rings. Right. So this is a remarketing of what already existed. It's just he just took it, flipped it, created the story, added the touch to it, and in the way he marketed that, that's how the shoe came about and how it played such an important role. Right. And that definitely plays a, plays a part to the consumer, for sure. Correct. Now the consumer gets to know why the shoe is so special. Right. Why the shoe plays a history for Jordan and why was it important to create the shoe. Absolutely. And I think it's important for people to understand that uh, the way the world looks at fashion with sneakers which they now call shoes, is right. totally different <laughs> because they changed the concept of the word sneaker to shoes because so many people started to wear sneakers as shoes. Yes. You, you understand, like when I was growing up, 
the shoes were shoes and sneakers were sneakers. But then the crossover effect of seeing business people wear sneakers instead of their shoes, right. or going out to high-end dinner locations, or going to, you know, award shows or or you know parties or you know events, and wearing sneakers, they had to change that concept to shoes, because it was not like that. But now, you could wear a tuxedo with this six ring here and get away with it because of the class of the six ring structure. And that how they made the shoe, correct. Absolutely. So there's, there's no more separation if you select the right shoe, which is sneakers, but if you select the right pair, you can basically wear today's sneaker shoes with anything. I, I definitely agree. And I think a lot of brands are now starting to realize that correct. and are starting to to brand how they create anything that they create, whether it's the shoes, the clothes, they're all starting to incorporate those things so that the consumer, when they purchase it, they're able to still make it however they want to, whether streetwear or whether they do that and make it formal wear. Right. They're able to incorporate all of that, and I think that's very important. So I like that Jordan actually changed it up and switched it up and created this shoe and the six rings and yeah it's definitely something great for sure it's great yeah um i also like to point out that the concept of marketing jordan also opened up a bunch of women that typically wouldn't wear or want a men's shoe to want to incorporate smaller sizes so they could have the same experience because there were no such thing as women with six rings. But they didn't care about the rings, they cared about the lifestyle and the look of the brand right. to match what they had in their wardrobe. So I think the marketing concept of which we're talking about in this podcast is important not just for Jordan's brand and Nike, but for the way that this new world looks at things as um, partnerships. And if you're gonna market to young, you have to market to the family. Right. And I think now he's starting to understand that because as of lately, he now has this fashion influencer, Alayli May, which I was telling you about the other day. Yes. Um, he's now taking her and let, it, let her create her own shoe for women that just embodies everything that, that women embody. Correct. And it's not only that men are able to win championship in the sixth ring, but women are able to. And women have been. It's just nobody was marketing that Correct. and now I think he saw that as a window of opportunity and he's taking that and he's growing with it and a lot of people are gravitating towards it and they definitely like the idea right. of not only um, him taking the shoe and marketing it as it's only for men but that women can win championships too and women could do the same things and that all comes into play together. Yeah absolutely. Um, I also like the way that um, today's sneaker companies or shoe companies are now marketing in areas where it's not just athletic but you could see their marketing strategies on mobile devices you can see them on the computer you can see them on their you know their electronic devices and pads where before you would only see them if it was a footlocker or a, right. you know, a uh, Models, but now you could see a traditional sneaker in, on multiple levels that might not just be sports apparel. And I think the marketing of sneaker is just like with sports, um, the crossover of athletic wear, athleisure wear, even with the women, with the yoga and the Pilates and the fitness, where women used to wear that to go work out now that's just their lifestyle. They wear that just to wear it. They wear it to feel sexy. They right. wear it to go to the club. They wear <laughs> it to go to work. They wear it, and it's, it all comes down to the way you market the shoe, because if the shoe was only marketed as a basketball shoe, which is really what it started as, right. that's all people were buying it for back in the days, just What's for mainly basketball. basketball that's all it was. You cannot wear baseball shoes to play basketball, and the right. baseball shoes were t 
targeted in that way right. for that certain consumer. Right. But now the way they're starting to make sneakers and brands in general, jackets, hats, whatever, they're making it very universal. Absolutely. And where it's not only just to play on the court, but it's also to play off courts. Right. And I think that's definitely very important for a lot of brands to start incorporating how to market that shoe to not only fit one demographic, as you were saying, right. but to embody a whole, a whole culture. And certain sneakers are now doing the CrossFit where it's a workout basketball and a outdoor walking shoe, right? right? So now it's not just one, right? You can play ball in it, you can walk, and you can clean it up and put some jeans or a pair of pants on and keep it moving for dinner. And that never happened before either, you know, coming up in the era of pro kids and Converse and Puma and, you know, Pony. And especially Nike. Nike used to have specific shoes for specific things. Nike, when you're running. Absolutely. Or when you're <laughs> doing whatever type of outdoor wear, they had a certain category. Now, all those different shoes are not even being worn for those reasons. Correct. Because of the way they're marketing them. Absolutely. So, I think that's definitely very... <laughs> Let's go. Come on, pop culture. Get that shit. Well, what I like to do with Top Gun is market Top Gun in ways that it's beyond it feeling like it's only a, I don't want to say, uh, you know, military or Air Force gear, but for Top Gun to do crossover branding the way that I wear it. So right. to see an ad with Top Gun with an Air Jordan or, or a New Era hat or a Nike sweatshirt, do it to where people could, you know, understand the crossover look and the appeal of Top Gun is the way that other brands are doing now, which are partnering up acquisitions or mergers and collaborating. Just like in music, right? People like artists collaborating. Collab together. And I think the collaborating concept is going to be bigger because no one in today's world, even somebody big as Nike, they are having their, their numbers are not where they want to be because Adidas is taking a lot of the newer market. And they're definitely collaborating with a lot of, with a lot of artists. And they're right. collaborating with a lot of different brands and making it. And it's, Jordan recently did that with Drake. Yes. Drake took his OVO yes. brand, October's yes. Very Own, and he created a shoe, yes. a Jordan shoe. And now you're not only making that shoe just for streetwear and for, for to play basketball, but he took that shoe and now you want to be like Drake. Yeah. And you want to wear it and look fly and look cool. And that's definitely important for, very, for brands to collaborate together. And I think if Top Gun does that for sure, and especially you representing it, they're going to get there. and. Yeah, I, I, thank you, and I, and I think that the concept of marketing today, I think with any brand, any corporate brand, you have to reach beyond you, what they thought the, your demographics were. Don't assume that this is just a 15 to 21 or 21 to 30, sure. because people's mindset are different today. The young girls, young guys might want to wear what their parents are wearing, and their parents that are older might want to wear what their kids are wearing. And people like to see that. People yeah. don't only want to see a certain type of race, a certain type of um, age category wearing it. People want to see it embody a whole, a whole, a whole generation, a whole culture. Um, people want to see it bigger than that. And I think that's that's definitely very important for brands to start doing that and to start targeting not only that one type of consumer but a whole different type of consumer in a whole struck can you get where I'm yeah, going with <laughs> yeah. no I yeah. think I think it's important for people to just reach beyond their right. original blueprint right exactly right and and I think that's because the world is so diverse um, and even when you look at the technology of people that prefer Apple over Mac or Apple over the you know the traditional um, uh, what do they call it, the uh, traditional format of the computer. Um, they don't say Mac, they call it a, well, it's Mac the and... The MacBook? Windows. 
Yes, windows. Windows. Okay, yes, yeah. windows. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. So there are some people that prefer windows for whatever reason, and there's some people that prefer Apple, you know, their format with the, the Mac notebook. But I think it's the marketing is a big part of the appeal. And if you look at the way that Apple decided to market their their products, their hardware, it appealed to a very youth driven market. Right, because now they're paying attention to not just the function of the phone, but they're also paying attention to the way the phone looks, the way it which looks. is very important, especially to the younger crowd. Yes. So with Windows, when I think of Windows personally, I think of back in the days. I don't think of a new, newer model where I, I want to buy it because I see all my friends or whatever the case is. Or right. I see it more as like, okay, maybe I might have that in my home. It might work, but I want all of the Apple products, and I feel like... Windows is now exploring all of that, but Apple is like dominating for sure because they're knowing how to market the consumer and they know what their audience is, which is very important yeah, when super. you're trying to market something. Absolutely, I think it's very important. I also think that the concept of the word marketing, um, now when you go to college, I think back in the day when they said I have a marketing degree, I think what we're doing today with this podcast, we, we discussed branding and advertising and now marketing, but the word BAM, which is branding, advertising, and marketing, the initials, is all in one. So I think in college, even the professors or the schools now have expanded that word marketing to branding and, and, to ad advertising. and, and advertising and, and even into... Um, you know, the next level of what we're going to talk, promotion, and and all of those, you know, collaborative efforts of, of, of awareness on these platforms are changing the direction of your, your, your education. Right. Because it's no longer a one-way street, you know? And all of, all of those components are definitely elements that you need to create the overall good or the overall service or product that you're trying to sell. You can't have one without the other. So when you market something, you definitely need the branding and the advertising. And back in the days, there wasn't much of that. It was just, you market it, boom, you have it. And now it's like incorporating all of that. And I think the world has a lot to learn and you're definitely teaching them on all of that, so. Well, it's a new world. Right. <laughs> and like I said. Just like his album. <laughs> like my album. Lance Romance. I have to remind everyone in the podcast world that's listening. Um, this is the Six Ring series. In the Six Ring series, we're discussing the concept of branding, advertising, and marketing. That's the first three. And then the next three would be the concept of where we're going to take it to another level with promotion, internet, and networking, which is called the PIN. So you have the BAM and the PIN. And these six concepts are the concept that I saw or through the lens of uh, Michael Jordan with his brand, Jordan, with the six rings. But I think the combination of, of our podcast, which is Sneakers on the Gram, will open up to many people that might not understand the terminologies of what, what we were basically bringing to a new listener. Which, right. is, which is the business side of the shoe game, right? Because now but the sneaker now, game... And it's beyond the shoe itself. It's beyond the shoe. People want to know the story beyond the shoe. People don't only want to just purchase a shoe and cool. They want to know the history and the story and... Absolutely. What makes the shoe the it shoe. Yeah, what makes the shoe. And as you know, um, even just as an independent person, um, the shoe industry game is, is big business um, from from the flight club all the way to uh, the mom and pop shops, all the way to, uh, what did so I shop the, the other way? Stadium goods. And stadium but goods. But now is also an online field. Online. And Everyone yeah. wants to trade sneakers and sell sneakers and get the limited edition. And, and now it's, if you have that exclusive shoe and you market it well, that shoe sells out in seconds. Absolutely. So I, no one even does lines anymore. Before, back in the days, I had to take my mom to take me to line up for that shoe. Right. Now, the way they've, they've made that, where 
you have all these different platforms and I think that's where marketing is definitely important because now no one is realistically going into the store. People still shop in the stores, but people want to get it right away right online away. and versus going into the store and actually seeing the shoe online, you have to do so much more than that. You can't just post the shoe online. Absolutely. You have to post advertising and you have to do the whole branding of the shoe and right. that definitely is very important. Right, so the marketing has changed for the consumer that used to want to have maybe the in-store experience, they want it right now. They want the, the instant gratification of getting it the next day or the next two days directly to their home, to right. their mailbox, without having to wait in line or even having to travel. And it's also seeing the shoe itself and, and seeing the behind the scenes and how they made the shoe and right. what, what makes the shoe and the idea behind creating the shoe. Correct. Well, um, there's a lot more in store the next three episodes, but we did well with these three um, as a uh, podcast focused around the concept behind the actual shoes and product and um, hopefully more people will listen in but we also have a visual podcast which is right. different because most people don't get to actually see who um, the host who's behind who's behind the, the scenes, voice the voice <laughs> but they get to see us and they'll see us online and Amazon Prime and FNN and um, content will be also distribute through our uh, carriers which will be Comcast and DirecTV and additional uh, carriers um, and international markets as well. Um, so until next time, we'll see you. This is Lance Romance. This is Kimberly. This is Sneakers on the Gram. Don't forget to go get Lance Romance. Hey, Christmas on Ice, Insta Fame, Pop Culture, New World yoga inspiration and in the fall you'll be able to get South Grand Prairie Kid country album. Till then Lance Romance, Kimberly catch you guys in the street, keep your feet fresh keep your shoes fresh keep your cakes sure. clean <laughs> right? all of the above and don't be faking on the ground oh. we're out. Peace. Peace. See ya.